I'm Dave from Drift Games. I'm Josh from Drift Games. And this is our review of 2022. Everything you didn't see, you did see, and the best bits. Let's get into it. Perfect. I can't even speak. <laughs> you know when your mouth's that cold and you just... Blah, blah, blah. My brain's saying the words and my mouth aren't. We don't get to say I'm Josh from Drift Games. I know, I'm Josh from Drift Games. <laughs> Twenty twenty two was definitely our craziest year we've ever had. We did things that we never thought we'd do, see things we never thought we would, and we've never had a chance to look back on it until right now at Christmas because it's been full steam the whole way through the year. If you told us twelve months ago what would have happened in that twelve months, I don't think we'd ever have believed it. I genuinely don't. When you look back at twelve months ago from what we did at the start and everything that's happened in between, there's so much that actually did happen. And we're looking forward to seeing this video too because you guys might have missed some videos, might have missed some things, and we got some behind the scenes stories for you as well. But what I want to kick off with is the maddest thing that started that year, which was going to the Middle East. We went to the UAE to run the Emirates Drift Championship, four rounds, four weeks. And while the track action was mental, what happened outside the track was just as mental. Welcome to the Drift Games vlog. We are in a loud and smoky Yas Marina circuit, the Emirates Drift Championship, and it is crazy here. So if you're ready, we're ready, and he's ready. <laughs> What's up, man? This is a new S14 we built in like two, three weeks. Two, three weeks? So you haven't put anti-lag on it by any chance? No, it does. <laughs> if you know any of his That's cars... My right? That's my yeah. signature. <laughs> it's the most aggressive anti-lag I've ever heard. Right. Ready? Yeah, well, kind of. This could be the most aggressive exhaust ever from both the turbos yeah. linked up. So these are sand rails and they're basically used for going as fast as you can through the desert. Look at the length of the shock on this thing. It's the size of my arm. It is. Bananas. So this is a taster of what we're going to see inside. Wow. So this is, this is fancy. You're flexing now. This was the internet breaker. Yeah. This one was. This is the crushed carbon or forged carbon. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aston Martin, of course. There's a lot of damage since when I hit Danny. It's a drift car. Yeah. That's the thing, people will think this is just some crazy build that sits in here. No. This thing, I've seen it smash into people. I've seen people smash into it. Yes. I've cried a little bit inside every time it's happened, but it's yeah. a beautiful build. This is like a perfect S15. I know a lot of people would say the SR20 makes it perfect, but let's be honest. So this is a V8, but everything from the running gear to the paint, to the fitment, to the wheels, everything I think is just on point on this thing. Obviously after the last round, I, don't, I think it, the gasket's gone or something, because there's some uh, latte happening with this. <laughs> <laughs> and what power is it running at the moment? Uh, uh, on the wheel, it was uh, just shy of six. This is the other end of the scale. Yeah. Super original. But you haven't seen, I have actually changed the engine in this one. Oh, yeah? yeah, put a nice beams ah, in. Ah, what a swap! Yeah. The kind of old school stitching. And look at the center console, all, all carbon. carbon. And then even the door pockets, carbon. There's about 3,000 Irish men screaming at their television saying, will you just get to the IS200 please? It's a BN Sport, but the fenders and the quarter panels are from a guy from Russia. I love the gusset work in there. It's just so, like... They try oh, wow. oh, like, look, look at this, look at the dimpling on the firewall. It's like the little touches that make it so much different. We're now going to go and check out Ahmed Daham's workshop. He's had a bit of a calamity lately because he basically had an entire mudslide into his uh, workshop and it buried a lot of his vans and cars. <laughs> 
are you? Good, man. All good? good? to see you. Good to see you. RCF was parked over here. <laughs> this is your RCF. Yes. Proper, this is your demo car. This is my demo car, yeah. yeah. So we'll show some pictures of that now. And uh, that car was like, that's a beautiful car. It is, to be honest. Yeah. And what's it's the condition shame. of it now? It's a shame. Is oh, it? It's, uh, everything's gone from the inside. Engine, wiring, ECUs, uh, fuel cell, everything. It's just gone. So yeah, but the body is still in one, almost. So it's okay. Like, are you going to start again or is it like just... Yeah, yeah, we're going to rebuild the car. Because oh, anyways, we're, we're going to put a 2J in it. So we have an engine ready for it. So These are all 2Js. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, too bad. Man. I'll tell you. It was like... One, oh, two, man. Three, five, oh, six, my. Seven. It was like 10 or 12 2Jz blocks. So you got a rocket bunny kit, then molded it in Kevlar. Kevlar. And made it Kevlar. And the whole car is Kevlar. The whole car is Kevlar. The whole car. Is Kevlar. And what sort of power are you hoping to run in this when the 2J goes this in? This is, we made 1,200 horsepower. The more you rev the 2J, the better it's 9,500 yeah. is very high for yeah. a 2J. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a storage facility for cars that aren't exclusive enough to go in the main gallery and aren't classic enough to go in what we just saw. So who knows? We're just going to go in and see what's here, but apparently it's pretty mind blowing, and yes, it is. Adam start this. Yeah, that's just casual. No, yeah, no, no, Adam no. start a Veyron. Go on. It's a story to tell the people back home. You just started a Veyron. It's got the same key as his golf, so he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Be careful now. Push, push that door out because I can't get my leg in. Adam's gonna go start a Veyron. <laughs> I can only imagine why his face is like. <laughs> we have no idea what's about to happen. All we know is that Dan Price, one of our friends, is arranging a ton of very cool JDM cars to meet us right in the center of Dubai. There is the craziest NSX you've ever seen over here. Outside Dubai, we're at a place called Fujera. It's about an hour and a half into the mountains towards Oman, so a very, very strange location. We were told to come here to meet some people with some very, very special cars. So this is a Pandem kitted R32, but is it a GTR or just a GTR? It's a GTR. Yeah, I'll be to say GTR. It's a crazy color. It's like I'm not sure the camera can make out what color it's it like actually proper, is. It's like an exaggerated midnight purple. And then we have an R32 GTR, very different than the other one. More stock bodied, but really nice fitment as well. And Enki wheels. It's nuts. That is genuine. I don't know if there's many more GTRs with that low mileage left in the world. to his personal garage 
and we've no idea what he has here either but this is part of the adventure of being in the Middle East. He's a big GTR guy so I'm expecting some special cars so let's head inside. Three or 32s, one or 34, one or 35. We just want to say a huge thank you to the people of the UAE and all those crazy people with crazy cars that were so accommodating to us. There was so many things that happened there that you tell stories about for years to come. And also, uh, so many unpredictable moments. I mean, one of the biggest ones for me was when we were doing the Skyline shoot with all the Skylines on the mountain road. The guy with all the Skylines, or the guy who had the R34 GTR, the silver one, was actually a policeman. So we were shutting down roads to actually film that, and pedestrians and other road users had to wait while we filmed it, and he was like, don't worry about it, we're gonna get the shots, which was nuts. But we did something sketchy, like we were doing our normal stuff of like hanging out the cars, filming and stuff like that, and at that point we didn't actually know he was a policeman. We did not know he was a policeman <laughs> at that point. And he had to tell us to calm down a little bit. He just said, just because I'm the head of police here doesn't mean that you can do what you want, and we went, you're the head of police? It was wild and we had so much fun there. Uh, Sultan obviously showing us around so many cool cars, going to Liwa, all that stuff was amazing. And what I love about that part of the world is the perception of the UAE is huge wealth, you know, all superficial, no core values, but they are so passionate about their cars, whether it's sand rails, whether it's you know, drift builds, whether it's JDM builds, we loved every minute of it. And uh, it's one of the most fond memories I have is just exploring garages there and seeing stuff you'll never see anywhere else in the world. Very I don't want to claim it too early on, but possibly favorite car in here. That might be one of the nicest S15s I've ever seen. When I see a parachute on the back <laughs> of a car, and I've learned this in the States, very fast car. <laughs> We've got a Supra. This in Onesosaur is beautiful. Lovely green, by the way. This is my new favorite color for a car. This car, this is like... We've spent uh, a little more than a year restoring this car. It's got everything on the, of the Nismo catalog installed. Everything? Everything. Everything. Wow. Everything. He must have spent equal to the car's value in parts just for this car. Oh my god. Dave, get down here. Come on, get down here. <laughs> it's brand new. Look oh at that. God. That is literally... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Remember we saw LZ's one and we were like, that's the cleanest we've ever seen? You know what, it's cleaner than my bed. But even though we started the year with a lot of travel, the core of our channel is often poorly modifying cars and trying to create projects and create cool stuff. The crazy thing is, in that first couple of months of the year, Josh ended up getting an, um, a car for, what, a thousand euro, the MX-5? Yeah. And I ended up buying the most expensive car I've ever bought, which was the Toyota Supra. We so, cover both. So we had both ends. every scale from modifying the Supra to modifying your MX-5 to the 15 to everything else that was in between. We were in the garage a lot trying to get cars together, sometimes with varying results. So you sign it over, Dave. Yeah, this is the official paperwork. So the paperwork's done. And here is the key to my brand new GR Supra A90 in red. So if you're watching this from another country, this might not seem like a massively special thing, but for this particular car, this is the most expensive place probably in the world to buy a Supra. So this car retails for 93,000 euro. And because of that, they haven't sold a whole lot in Ireland. Today, we're gonna to take it for a spirited drive to give my first impressions on it. Is it as good as we think it'll be? Well, the best way to check that is on the track. We're actually here in front of the BMW signs. That wasn't on purpose, that's just... Just so happened that to just be. That so happened to be. That is a yield sign. But if that's a yield sign, then this, well then technically this is a crossroads and we have a phrase in Ireland. Um, it's a, I think it was, I think it was one of the original prophets from Ireland said it years ago, medieval times, that if the crossroads are empty, you have to give her plenty. Can it do rings? Can it do rings? So we're gonna put it into manual mode and see if the car will do rings. Plant it. It'll do rings. It def definitely does rings. I now just felt a little bit, bit of guilt because they're Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, so uh, very expensive tires that we're destroying here. Get rid of them, it's fine. It's fine, I'll never use them again. It's fine. Anyways, 
It's actually really nice to drift. You just need a bit more commitment. I didn't commit enough the first time. But what we're doing on this episode finally is we're putting some noise in the Supra. So this is a full uh, stainless steel exhaust. I've specced them with, you know, because we went with the carbon kit. You like this, Josh? Oh, you're doing a lot of, you got carbon on carbon. Carbon on carbon, so carbon tips on the exhaust. Well. I thought they looked quite nice. You gotta take out the standard airbox, which is here and put in all of this. You've had a bit of research and there's no way did you just point directly to it straight away. What, the airbox? What else would be the airbox? That could be the fuse box even. No, because I'm, I'm just proud of you, Dave. Definitely more pops and bangs anyways. Now she sounds well. There's no other way of hiding it, so we're just going to announce it. No, it's not that, Wayne. It is not that. It's not that. It's another hairdresser's car. It's not another hairdresser. It absolutely is another hairdresser's car because the new project car is a Mark One MX-5. What do you think, Wayne? Going to scrap that and wear home, are we? Look at the rust on it. Project car, project car, honestly. Look at the rust on it. Listen, you have to you have to see potential in this. So yes, a lot of you, well, probably, you may not be surprised that I got another Mark One. There's a few reasons why I got this and I explained them on the way down. Is one, it's cheap and affordable if you get it in the right state, that I think, even though you see the rust on, Wayne, what are you going through? Even if you see the rust and stuff, you see later on in a few episodes or next episode, what I'll be doing about that to get around that problem. I have a massive soft spot for these because my drift one I actually had as a road car for many, many years. Oh! I think it's got an exhaust on it. Wait, that definitely sounds like an exhaust. And essentially, I have two and a half grand to spend on this build, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm gonna be inventive with it. So I got this car for 1,000 euros. Bargain, right? Yeah, well, how much is left in it for me? I'm not gonna lie here. I, I bought you a sausage sandwich on the way down. So with the EDC behind us, with some of our project cars ready to rock and roll, we hit the on season, as we call it, when all the shows and all the events start. And it kicked off with our first Drift Games Bash. And the Bash has been, I think it's been a labor of love for us over a couple of years, but it's definitely the most fun event we do. Well, it's by far the most fun event that we do because we get to drive. We get, <laughs> we get to drive in it. But also, it brings, I think, everybody in the community of drifting in Ireland together. You get the pros like James Dean and all those guys coming down. We also have guys who are on their first ever drift day. Everybody's mixed together for a weekend. Everybody gets advice from other people. They get to drift with people they would see on the YouTube or, or the TV. And they also get to try four different layouts in Mandela Park and they have all the spectators there cheering them on. It's a lot of fun. And we knew the first bash was gonna be interesting because we were bringing all our cars to it. And that, as always, did not go well. Such an easy car to drive. I farted. What? No, that's that's 
The last, the last one has finally given up. You probably saw in the last clip. There was a. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Did we address the Mustang in the video? We haven't addressed the Mustang. Went out first passenger spin. Found fine. Great steering. Went over to the second passenger spin. No oil pressure. But even I'm not a genius, and I know that's not a yeah. good sign. Von Gittin Jr., David Egan, Danny Neville. Who else? James Dean. You. Who else drove the car? That's enough. And Adam broke the oh, end. I broke it. I won't. Oh my god. Anyway, so yeah, then Dave decided, Dave woke up from a slumber and decided to do, because he was having clutch issues with the Corvette yesterday, and he's like, maybe it'll cool down overnight, it'll be all fine. Went for one lap, stuck in second gear, and the car is currently stuck in position. Oh, sitting over there, so. It's a clutch gun. So then Josh decided to save the day. I'll run the passenger spins all day, and I'll keep going on car, and the car soldiered on, and I'd say it did 10 times the passenger spins that the two of these cars did, and we are like, this car is ne never going to die. And as then it could, yeah, as I say, you cut to the scene of, good 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 hey bro.
So with our first drift, we get into the year, the bash causing us lots of damage and having to fix all of our cars. We then turned our attention to all of our street cars, which we made a pact between us all that would drive to the first big car show of the year, which was Something so we've never done before. Never driven them, we usually trailer them. And we decided we we're gonna wrap the S15, we're gonna get all the cars ready, and we're gonna drive them off the motorway to Dub Shed. And that was very cool, seeing them all in a procession. Uh, most of them are my cars, so it was really weird that I, I was watching. They were all your cars, but it's still cool to be. It was very cool. Uh, cool to have the convoy up. It was a convoy of cars that we built in a shed in Kildare, heading up to be right front stage at Dub Shed, and uh, it was an amazing weekend. You guys remember my red PS13. I haven't seen that on the channel in a while because we had some big plans. We were waiting on some parts. We brought it to our boys here at AAA Customs. So here she is, looking very different already. Dave, this was a complete car. Like, no, it was no. ready to go, it was roadworthy, it was everything. Anyway, <laughs> the inspiration for this car is I was up late one night watching YouTube and you guys might know Jimmy Oaks in the US has a 1JZ PS13. And I just looked at that car and went, that is how a PS13 yeah. should look. But I just wanted something that was so wide, so stanced. So what we've got with here is Origin Labo 75 mil fenders front and back. They're the biggest fenders I could get. Are we good? You're right there, mate. I think it's in there. I got a... Oh, Jesus. Oh, okay. Wow. My God, the paint is unbelievable. Oh, the wheels were the right choice. I thought that would change. Couldn't have got a better color combo. Oh my god, that is unbelievable. The thing looks just spectacular. I'm just so happy with it. I'll throw a little bit of tire shine on it now, get her in some schnapps, and uh, just do that classic sit on the wall and look at it for 20 minutes, which is really what all I want to do. So this is an RB. It is RB26. RB26. Yeah. At what power? This is actually my granny's private lane. Is this your granny's lane? That's yeah. very convenient. Is your granny's lane? <laughs> granny's definitely <laughs> on. <laughs> Your granny's not gonna be happy. She's gonna go mad, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what? What is this? <laughs> what the? So before it didn't have the enter light on. It'd be rude not to take the in between a star cheek cento. <laughs> This is this is intimidating. It's scaring the car. What we really came here to see is the pile of S15s around the back. And the main main reason is the one that Dave saw, which is this grey one. That's, that is the face of camber, a bit of camber make it work. I'm gonna need some serious camber arms. Oh no, they're very wide. So, well that's not going to work, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Something about this. Camber will get it to fit. About two inches outside the arch. Yeah, but you'll, you'll figure that out. But we are here. A precision tinted graphics. The S15 is getting a brand new color. I don't want to prolong this anymore. I kind of want to see it. Let's go. Oh, wow. That is a very, very jazzy color. The camera does not do this justice. It's a glitter blue, it's a glitter teal. So this is all about being really glittery outside uh, with lights. And you can see a little bit of it with the hex lights, but um, I'm totally ignored, by the way, this complete. Oh, I, I, I literally just I expect to go out. Just by the way, there's a full replica John Player special single seater car. <laughs> My 
think we're ready to hit the road now. All the cars are graphic up. So now it's a big hope that all of these cars make it to Dub Shed because none of them have driven any great distance. And hopefully the next time you see us, we'll be at Dub Shed setting up our merch shop without any breakdowns. So wish us luck. Was there any damage to report? No. I say only two wheel bearings and half of the tire on the front is gone. All right, let's go in and see where we're going to set up for the rest of the day. Excited. They all got here. That's a massive success. I can't believe it. So that got here as well. The super, super was lovely. Cri I knew the I super. Shut lovely. up. Look at my pits. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. It's a little bit gravelly because we had some partying last night. Partying celebrating that all our cars got here in the end. There's Adam O'Connor. That no. is straight out of max power. That is Need for Speed 2 Underground. It's an absolute bit of me. That's a bit of you then. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of me that. You used to have a few S2000s. Yeah, I have an S2000. I liked my S2000 but it didn't look as good as this. Silly, so we're getting, silly, we're getting silly, into silly, wowzers silly, stuff silly, now. Silly, silly, this, is like, this is lovely, like this colour combo. Yeah. Yeah, this now. Uh, husband and wife. Gold. Gold. This is <laughs> this is some combination. These wheels are probably the nicest wheels I have ever seen on anything. To be fair, right? Just think about it. This is in someone's driveway somewhere. This combo, like. Okay. You see this? Again, I'm going to slag Blaine. This is where he should be heading with a six series. This is this is the way to do the old school BMW. On air, decked, simple, custom arches. This thing is beautiful. I love this car. Are they custom arches? Yeah, yeah, they're arches off an E30. Wow. Let that Josh off here now for 20 minutes. Here we go. So probably the best. Not even car. Might, people best not band. Not people but they are good. hugely expensive. Massively. Is, yeah. this, this would be like 50 grand. They're very good. But, but just look at that. Like, I'm not even joking. The, on some if of them, you crash, your knees are going through the back window of the car in front of you. He's living, he's living your old best life. I'm really getting a lot of colour inspiration because that colour is just lovely. Okay, we're going to the back first. So we put the Porsche into it and then faded wow, the faded that's paint cool. up the We've found, the, found our favourite Beetle. How have we now. started here by slagging off V dubs and by the end of it I really want to buy a Beetle? So Luke. Yo. So you're here driving this. What is this? This is a Pro Light. So it's a V8 short course stadium truck that races on dirt. So I guess there's nothing left to do but go for a spin. I'm a professional racing driver, I know how to do this. Well, this is just, hang on a second. Yeah, don't don't get too handsy there. Whoa, there you go. It'll take a lot to feel that little thing, Josh. <laughs> it's even quite warm in here, so what's your excuse? Speaker. We spend stupid money in this company. We spend, we spend, we spend money stupidly. We used to carry around big speakers, now we've got this small speaker, and it has one little feature. <laughs> <laughs> we are a professional company. Uh, we'd like to disclaim that anyone who's frightened with that this weekend don't care. So much fun. Thanks to the games guys that helped us get the. Are you happy now? Record continues. It's never not one of us. I've never done anything to it. <laughs> so we come back from Dub Shed. We're finishing off the street cars. We assume what the rest of the year is going to look like. And then I get a phone call from Aaron Losey at Lone Star Drift. Now, Josh and Adam had met him on Drift Week the year before. I'd known him through the internet for a very, very long time. And he rang me and said, we're putting together an LZ party in English Town and I want you to announce it. Commentary, as we would call it in Europe. 
And I said, well, okay. He said, I'll tell you what, if you commentate this, we'll give you a free entry to Drift Week at the end of the year. That's all we thought was going to happen from this. But when we got there, it was probably the most life-changing event we've ever been to. From who we met, not knowing any of the big stars at the time, to walking out on my own in front of 10,000 people with no co-commentator into a wild event that had no planning. Everything that weekend was so nerve-wracking, but ended up being a game-changer for us. Before the madness this weekend kicks off, we want to go, we just want to go around the paddock and look at all the cool cars. There's literally cool cars everywhere. Nice or 32 skyline here. It's an SR. It sounds like an SR starting up. <laughs> I was about to think, what, by, by, by it not starting up? Ah. The beautiful sound of misery. Just <laughs> fills the air. Never starts first drive. Never starts first time. Mine never starts at all. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is beautiful. That's really cool. One thing they do right over here is style. See, we're style boys. We like our drift cars looking as good as they go. So we're here with Adam. Adam, thanks for having us over for this event. You and Aaron reached out to come over and do a little bit of announcing for your... Sorry, these new little, like, just fun little competitions that are a bit of fun for everybody. <laughs> I'm so, dude. I'm kind of confused. I'm not going to lie. I think we're doing, like, games and, like, some call-outs, yeah. but it's not really anything formal, right? Well, that's much better for we're, me. I don't we're have... also confused what's going on. We were told, be here at this time, and we'll figure it out when we get there. And I was yeah. like, that sounds good to me. I think, like, Aaron was like, hey, look, Look, we're gonna have fun. All the Drift Week guys are gonna be there, and let's promote it. And we'll have a bunch of people come out, and we'll just have a good time. And we're like, yep, yep, sounds good. It's all the detail we need. Yep. <laughs> oh. Just be chill, Dave. And I gotta talk to them all in America, which is crazy to think starting my first commentary gig in Dublin ten years ago now to being here to like eight, nine, ten thousand people in America. It's pretty wild. Like and we play it down quite a bit, but we do fanboy over these. We quite this a is bit. like commentating on the people that we watch on YouTube. This is and really you guys play weird. really cool. Like, I don't know who oh, this yeah, is. Just, it's just happy, casual TJ Hunt on MLZ, you know? Crazy. We're playing it cool. Really cool. No one even knows we don't know what's going on. And now, I gotta go hype up all these people. Have you not done an event in how long? Like two I years? Two, it's been two and a, a live event like this I haven't done in to a live crowd in probably two and a half years. And this is gonna be the biggest crowd you've ever talked in front of. Yeah. Look at this. Eek! <laughs> so the show is just about to start. Three, two, one, make some noise! Here for all right, we're setting this track. Good fun. Jimmy! I thought we were bowling. No, no bowling is later, Jim. Bowling oh, is later. Man. <laughs> okay, read it. Yeah. control there. It's alright. I'm still alive. We made it. That's what matters. We made it. That's what matters. When they hear the sound of the drum, they'll be saying, oh Lord, here they come. Yeah, here we come. Uh, here we come. Uh, here 
we come. Here we come. Yeah, here we come. Hey, here we come. Uh, here we come. Here we come. How much of that did you know was going on? Nothing from the start to the finish. I just saw it and went. Ugh. That was like 64 battles, I would say, there easily. In the space of 15 minutes. It was good, though. It was good fun. It was like, it was like watching highlights, but you were commentating to the highlights rather than actually it happening. This is tight. It's a shame, man. I feel like it would still be worth it. It's, you know, it's crazy. Like, we started making videos really seriously in the shed during COVID, just four of us. And like to think two years later, we're here announcing in front of like 10,000 people with all the biggest names in the game. It's a bit overwhelming, but it's all you guys watching the videos, supporting us back home that have got us here. So the sky's the limit, but it's all you guys pushing us this far that's got us here. So thank you so much to everybody. Tomorrow we're going drifting and we're going to be filming a few guys. It's too loud to film right now. As you can hear from last night's LZ Drift Party, my voice is absolutely trashed. TJ Hunt's 350Z is here. He's not here. But you said it's okay to drive it? TJ is like the coolest dude on earth with his cars and he was like, yeah, you know, if you say they're good people, I believe they're good people, I'll let them take a first spin. So we lied and said we were good people. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we don't know them at all. No, so uh, Josh is a big TJ Hunt fan, uh -huh. so this is like a little bit of a moment here. So we Dude, were like, play it cool. Sorry. <laughs> we a bit of a moment. For, I wouldn't embarrass him on camera now or anything, but he likes TJ Hunt. So we're going to let Josh do a little light lap in the car and just see how he gets on. It'll be fun. That's a good car. You'll like it. I'm going to take a very light lap. It's light. <laughs> oh, <it's> stress. <laughs> Well, I didn't expect to be doing this today anyways. The, gen the gentleman that was sitting in was a smaller man, Dave. You mean he wants to fat? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> My mouth's gone dry. It always goes dry when you drive. Just take it easy. I've gone silent. You've gone too silent now. <laughs> oh dear. That event was absolutely mind-blowing, to walk out in front of 10,000 people without much of a plan, having to hold a crowd. They were American, I'd never done anything in front of an American audience, it's always been a European audience. Um, it went as well as we could expect. It was well, a lot also fun. to mention, there wasn't much of a plan of the event. No. It was very much, let's go along with the flow. And we, we flowed, <laughs> we, we flowed. flowed pretty much. We drove cars, we got talking to a lot of influential people, we met up with Jimmy in his place, but we also got a small conversation with Adam LZ in the pits, which I suggested that taking what he was doing on the fun side, combining with our expertise of running events, could be something special to do in Europe. He said, let's see what we can do. It was a very short conversation, both of us thought nothing would come from it, but uh, it would shape a lot of big things to come in the rest of the year. But we didn't have much time to think about it because we were planning at this stage heavily into the first full season of Driftmasters in over three and a half years. Because of the pandemic, it had been stop-start, but this was Driftmasters going gung-ho. And the scary part was it was starting in our own backyard, which was Mandela Park, which is the event that we pretty much have to organize everything for. Ticket sales were huge. Expectations were huge. We were coming out of COVID. The 10-year streak was on the line. It was poised to be the event to end all events. And I think it probably was. Show. 
we have a huge display of cars. All the best in Ireland are here. We've got Drift Masters, the main event day. We've smashed the attendance record in Mandelo Park for a car show or a drift show or any show since this place was built in 1964. Over 10,000 people will be here later today. It's highly stressful, but the sun is out, blue skies. We couldn't have asked for better. I'll make you more so. That weekend was just, I don't know, it made me very proud because obviously starting off with you know events in the Irish Shift Championship and we had some amazing crowds, amazing events, but that one, I suppose, I suppose it reignited everything for us that the Irish crowd and drifting together is something very special. I never heard cheers like that. The fact that we had Calais Rovimpera, the WR now at time of videoing, the WRC champion we, was kind of in the mix at that stage. And we had Peter Vyansek break the 10 year streak, which I've been harping on about for years, which I was glad Delighted I that Delighted that, that I don't talk <laughs> about that anymore. But the action was great, the atmosphere was great, the weather was great. I think it was kind of one of those weekends where we all looked at it and Everything said, came together perfect. And we looked at it and said, God, there's so much life left in drifting. Like in Mandelo, there's still so much left in it. And I think everyone went away from that weekend smiling. The buzz was crazy. Um, I absolutely loved it from start to finish. Definitely lost my voice on the Sunday screaming and roaring, but uh, it was amazing. But I'm going to go back a little bit in time because before Drift Masters, before the LZ party in English Town, the week before that, I got engaged to be married. And on that trip, I had a week of holidays before all that madness kicked in. And of course, me not being able to switch off, I decided on that week, I had a lot of time on my phone, a lot of time on Facebook Marketplace. You know me. It's never a good thing. Never a good thing. King of Facebook Marketplace. I will say, self-proclaimed, but we will back it up. Pretty, pretty good at Facebook Marketplace. I ended up buying two cars in two different countries before all that madness. And the problem was when we finished Drift Masters, I had to turn to Josh and say, uh, grab your camera, we're going to Holland and the UK to buy two very, very unique and crazy cars. <laughs> So 
So we've driven 40 minutes from Rotterdam. Mark was kind enough to uh, give us a lift out to the car. We are now currently in. Mark, can you please name the, name the place we're in? Eleven Flight. That's what I said. <laughs> And uh, I'm not going to even try and <laughs> The car is in one of these garages and I'm very excited because I've seen probably 250 photos, I've seen videos, I've seen everything, but nothing compares to seeing a car for the first time. So I'm very excited. Wowzers. So here it is, a Nissan Silvia S12, which I've never wanted before because they normally look very rubbish, but this one does not look rubbish. <laughs> Dave, it's got a four-point harness. You said we could have a nice road trip in a nice car across some nice countries. All right, so we've taken a quick stop to grab some food, and at the back of the hotel we got some food in. There's a lovely little pet farm. I thought this would be a good time to educate people on car culture. That makes sense, Josh? No? I don't know where you're going with this. Well, think about it, right? This lot, this lot here, it's the peacock here, right? See him there? I see him. This is a bit like Fast and Furious car. Lambo doors, underglow, it's all about flash, right? Mm -hmm. Then you've got the ducks. They're like the boys on the airbags in the golfs. <laughs> Decked on the ground, yeah? You've got your Dodge Ram. Over there, you got. Wow! Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like you can see it and everything. That's so what are they? That's Wayne over there. Wayne's in the corner. Well, <laughs> and they'll come over in a bit and go, "Stay all these ducks. What's the story with these ducks? Stupid, stupid-looking ducks." That was what they would do. So that's how our whole car culture comes together. It's just like a petting zoo. Uh, different colours, different models. Most of them not working, lying around, not doing much. This is all your cars right now. It's not doing laps in the town. How are we getting that? Have you seen me tail? So there you go, a little bit of education for you halfway through this video. so it's absolutely like deafening in here. This is literally like driving a pro drift car on the road, which is unbelievable. I've never known Dave so excited for something. Like, you've done a lot of cool stuff. There's a big bump there. He's looking, is he looking as concerned as I am? I don't think he is. Oh! Something is absolutely sending me sideways here. You're millimeters from that side. Am I? Like millimeters. driving a car for over eight or nine hours straight is you get to learn a lot about it. It's not the most comfortable of cars, it's quite, but that's never really what it was supposed to be, so it's not a motorway cruiser, but it's run fine. I mean, this car has done about, I'd say, 10 kilometers in the last year, and now it's done about nine hours of driving straight and we're still not home. And we're about, what, one minute, two minutes away from where we're picking up the second car. And I think it's gonna be a bit of a surprise for everybody because I don't think anyone would expect me to buy one of these. Here it is, it's up there on the top. Oh yes! You know when you said you didn't like them that much, I wasn't expecting it to be um, supercar-esque. You know what, I'm not gonna drag this out anymore. I've done the unthinkable. What an IS200. Oh. had this car for how long? I think it's about four years now. 
and it started off as a stock IS200. Yeah. Let's leave the, the engine is not stock, so we'll leave that to last. We'll leave that as a bit of a surprise. Really, really nice. And this kit, I've never seen before. Yeah. This is, because usually you have a BN sports kit kind of comes straight down. Yeah. But this kit goes completely out about. It's, yeah, it's pretty wild. It's wild. So this is a minty fresh kit, right? Yeah, minty fresh. It's a, a Gundam Aero is what it's called. And there's probably, what, two or three of these kits? From what I've seen, I've only seen two. So this has a full 1UZ conversion. Yep. Uh, got the conversion kit uh, to mount it to the J160 gearbox. That's exactly. That's what want. It's gonna be a lot of fun on the way home. Yeah. Feels nice and tight. Works. So basically, here's Phil. Hello, Phil. I wanted to bring it aside because we want to get a first reaction. Because yeah. no, yeah, let's hope the battery's got some charge in it because it hasn't been moved. See, it's just like our garage. Just the same I was thing. Say, whatever garage you go to, it's, it's like, literally the same. Is in the top three cars in the world. That sounds unbelievable. How long yeah. since start to finish on the project? Oh, it's a three year, three year project and that's, you know, the planned one year, the second year of escalation and the third year of absolute <coughs> bonkers <Yeah>. escalation. <laughs> <laughs> so you did like ITBs on yeah. the end of it, which is why it sounds ridiculous. It sounds yeah, like a so motorbike actually. Yeah, so it's uh, 12 carbon fiber ITBs. I'm, I'm actually probably going to, I'm going to design an airbox for it eventually. Writer engineering GT1 headers on it, the manifolds on it, and it create quite a lot of heat that comes up and then just gets sucked back into this. So as I found when I did a gigantic burnout over there. <laughs> <laughs> the intake, the intake temperatures at that point post burnout, it's uh, quite high. So <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us around. And, uh, no worries. I mean, what a cool stop off, right? Um, as we go through the center of the UK, we've got another probably four hours to get back to a boat with two cars that I'm like 35% confident we'll get to the boat. I made it. I feel like an achievement has been made from that. So while I was off buying interesting and unique and different cars, Josh was more MX-5 content. But it, it was good MX-5 content. It was a big month for MX-5s. Big month for Josh's MX-5s. <laughs> so we had a lot of test videos on the MX-5, but I think just after the road trip was the first time we actually got the MX-5 working for the first time. And then we had the road car that I finished and then jumped over on a skateboard and MX-5 is kind of just completed. Here's some MX-5 content. <laughs> So, yeah, there is quite a bit of rust. I ain't sure how far back this goes. Have I taken on a little bit too much? Sometimes you ever just wish that you didn't dive into some jobs because what's behind and you can't see doesn't really matter. We're here now, so let's keep on going. This little bit over here realized that it didn't want to be part of the car anymore. And this bit. To be fair, I don't think that's going to be too hard. This, on the other hand, I honestly do not, I don't even know where to start with this. What on earth is just completely disintegrated from the car? Okay, not sure if I should be proud of this, but I really quite am proud of this. Um, yeah, again, it only needs to fill the shape of this, put it in and bend it and tack it into place and everything like that, and this has been held on with one arm. It's not 
too bad. This is ready to go to the body shop now, so the next step will be the body shop. We said we were just going to do a bit of a quick spray over here and then it's kind of escalated more and the boots now come off and then door trims and we're going to do the inside, we're going to take the doors off. So we're pretty much going to do a complete full respray, as much as you can kind of do it in two days. Okay, so obviously it's a black and white, you can't see the colour, but that is the colour. That is the first time I've actually seen the colour and I genuinely cannot wait to see this on the car. This is pretty much the most anticlimactic car that we have on the channel. We put tons and tons of work into it and it never really works. We built this car during the pandemic, put loads of time and development into it and it blew an engine and it's just kind of had loads of little problems. It's never, it's never had its day where it shone or actually worked properly. But with a broken manifold, we put a new manifold in. So we have a new Walton Motorsport manifold that's been put in and Ryan down at Vital Fabrications, he did all the readjusting and refabricating for the downpipe and wastegate and all that sort of stuff. There's no denying the problem that we have at the moment, which is a leaking steering rack. But we have another steering rack over there, so that should easily solve that issue. Uh, we have a new sump in the car, which should solve, well, you hope to God, I don't see any leaks so far. This should solve the leaky sump issue. If you can see, there's a few little rub marks there. So we made up these new ones. As you can see, the old ones kind of went straight there. So these ones kind of go in a bit and gives you a lot more clearance. Because we've never really properly done any testing or development on it, we just took the standard suspension in and just kind of went with that, which was fine. And it worked absolutely fine. But now we're down into the fine tuning stage. I'm going to chuck in the other springs for the front. BC have suggested for the front, a 200 mil 7 kg spring. So the plan today, we're gonna to throw this in. Fingers crossed Mandela Park have a small bit of track time that we can use to test the car.
didn't want to jinx it earlier. But that's gone incredibly well. The car works. So we started building this car a year and a half ago. No one's ever put an SR20 in an NC, we now know why. Um, all of the issues that we've had, we've had to work hard at it, then we've had an engine go, then we had a turbo go, then we had low oil pressure, then we had leaking. Manifold go. Manifold split, completely split from the turbo. Pretty much anything that could have gone wrong went wrong with this. So it's, it's a lesson to everybody building a car that sometimes you think, oh, it's YouTube, we just throw money at something and it'll all come out great. That's not, it's a development to this car. But today, after a year and a half, to see you smiling, to see the car actually ripping around the place, it's fast, it drives good. So with Josh's MX-5 is finally working, all 72 of them, uh, I decided to buy a real car. Not a very small car, well it's kind of a small car. One of my dream cars, I bought a Datsun 240Z. Our friends in Dean Motors had this crazy car come into stock, which was a very old man spec US car on the outside, bright orange, but inside was why I bought it, because it had a full race built V8 from Las Vegas. And I said, could I turn this car into something very me in three weeks, reveal it at the old school, new school show, and wow everybody. And this is what happened. Here it is, my new weekend car. So what makes it so special? Well, it's got a bit of a story. So this is obviously running a V8. You might think it's a Scarab 240Z, but it's actually not an original Scarab. So Scarab was kind of like, in the 80s, a company in America were putting Chevy small blocks into 240Zs. But in this case, this is actually a resto mod. So this car was brought back to a bare metal, uh, back to a strip shell. It was stitch welded and built all the way back up. This is actually the original color of the car, but it's had everything else replaced or upgraded. It's almost like buying a brand new improved 240Z. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to show you guys all the transformation when it's finished in a couple of weeks time. It's gonna be one of the most badass 240Zs on the planet. I can promise you that. We're gonna take off the cover and you guys can see it. Looks a little bit different now. I think they just really add to that kind of old race car look along with the numbers on the side. And um, we did the front headlights in yellow. However, there are some parts we didn't get in time. We've got halogen black lights coming for this car, stuck in customs, fender mirrors stuck in customs. And here is maybe some sealing rubber parts as well to seal between the body and the arches. But again, they were stuck in customs. On the front, well, we took off all the chrome and we put a huge black grill from Skillard. And we put a, what's called a, I can't even remember what the name of this is, but it's a very famous race front bumper from the 240Z. It's just slipped my mind right now. And we got a big, four inch extension splitter on the front. And while this looks like a regular splitter that you might see on a drift car, it actually goes the whole way under the car and under the sump. So it's actually aerodynamic uh, in its purpose as well. Um, other than that, we just cleaned up the front end. We put some blanking plates in here. So you, this is where the holes for the front bumper would have been. But Skillard also do these satin black blanking plates, which I think is quite cool. Um, so the lights will change, fender mirrors will change, a couple of bits and bobs will change. Um, it's not 100% finished, but for three weeks work, I think we did pretty well. It definitely looks more mean, it looks more JDM, it definitely looks more like a car going to a track day in Japan than a sort of 50 year old's midlife crisis from America, which is what the car looked like before. So I'm really, really pumped with it. There's kind of an overview of the car. We'll be doing more with it in the future, so we'll get, keep you guys updated on it. But for now, let's go back to old school, new school, when we showed it to everybody for the first time. 
So with the Datsun revealed to, well, I think it was a good reception, everybody seemed to like it, we had to park the cars away for a little while because a lot of traveling came next, a lot of different events, starting with Drift Masters in Austria, which we'd been to before, but this particular Drift Masters in Austria was absolute carnage on track. It was a very, very difficult event for the drivers and very exciting for us to Some watch. Some of the worst crashes I've ever Some seen. Some of the worst crashes we've ever seen in drifting were at that venue. It was such a fast track and every run was nail biting. Welcome to our hotel room, the Styria Spa Hotel. So the thing about this room is that uh, Keen booked double rooms, which everybody knows is not the same as a I'm twin a, room. I, I made an oopsie. So basically this is this is you and Lucas in this bed, right? No, so I, I can only imagine this is for couples on nice it's, romantic it's nice holidays. Room. I will say there's two beds, so oh. we can split them. Keen, that is not the issue. The issue is... <laughs> Let me go in there. <laughs> okay, Luke, Lucas, can you get to the toilet? interrupt more people doing their stuff. So this is like command center, basically. So they launched the space shuttles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so don't push the any key, okay? <laughs> this one says floor heating and I really wait, want it. Wait, there's a red button there, come on. Double day, double day. I don't know what that is. I've ruined that, I've ruined that. You're tempting fate. Okay, so business time for the weekend. We're ready to go live for top 32. Ian is ready. Ready? Ready, ready to rock and roll. Sorry, Dave. Shemek, you're talking You ready? Yeah, bro. Good. Vernon, you ready? Born ready, dude. All ready. Run is never ready. Let's go. It's oh. going to be the best transition ever, right? You ready? We're going to top 32. Very big off for Cherba. So, we are about to go live for top 16. This is the most stressful part. Uh, we're starting here at Benedictus Cherba's car because Benedict's had a massive crash earlier on. Probably one of the worst crashes I've ever seen. <laughs> Bent. It's actually cracked the block on the engine, steering rack, everything absolutely destroyed. Thankfully though, he's okay, so he won't make it to his top 16 battle, obviously, but hopefully he can get a fix before Sweden in two weeks. He's an awesome guy, really nice guy, and he says it's going to be an expensive week, and he's probably going to be very sore tomorrow, but very, very lucky that he doesn't have any more uh, injuries, obvious injuries from it. Thankfully the hands device and all of that stuff doing its job, but like... If this was a road car in an incident, this is a head-on crash at like 70 miles an hour. Not what you want to see, but hopefully the top 16 we don't see any more of it. But I'm excited for it. It's going to be some good battles. I think it's going to be some upsets. We're about to go live. You can see the camera operator is Becky. Uh, we're all going to kick the show off here. We've got our scripts. We've got everything we need to do. So, top 16 to the finish now. Put in as much adrenaline as I can, as much excitement as I can. Me and Ian are going to try and rock the crowd uh, here and at home. And uh, hope everybody enjoys it. Just finished the uh, top 16 introduction, about half a kilometer away from my commentary box. Top 16 has started with Ian. Time to jump into the tower and get this show underway. Well,
So we came back from Driftmasters Austria. The bags didn't even hit the ground, Josh, because we were heading off to somewhere we'd never been before. No, Goodwood. We went to Goodwood. And it was everything. That was a long time coming. It was everything I thought it would be and more. Crazy cars, we met some crazy people, some new projects, and that whole week was insane. So, traveling done, we're here at Goodwood. It's our first time ever at Goodwood. It's like the mecca of all things automotive. We're here to basically feature some cars that have never been featured before for drifting and they are being revealed at Goodwood. I want to kind of take you guys along for the ride, see all the cool cars. Like right now I'm looking over there at one of my favorite cars from when I was a kid, the Volvo S40 British Touring Car Championship car. Just buried in the grass over there. It's one of your favorite cars as a kid? Yeah, love that car. My dad had an S40 and then that was why we bought one because it was cool. <laughs> All right, so we brought it here to this beautiful backdrop. Came to them and said, I want to build a body kit for this Navara project that we're doing. Um, can you help me design one? So they basically, yeah, scanned the whole car. We started making arches, making front lips. I wanted it to still look like a Navara. Yeah. But I just wanted it to look like it had been in the gym and done a load of steroids. So it just got beefed up. Right. I mean, if you just built this as a 2.2 diesel with this kit, it would still be quite impressive. But this is definitely the most ridiculous part. So it's a 4.1 VR38. <laughs> Wow. With uh, an as new billet intake on it, Wharton manifolds, a crazy G series turbos, and then Forge Motorsport built us an incredible this cooling This is a package. work of art here. Yeah, this is all billet aluminium, but it's over 1100 horsepower at the flywheel. I think. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Very loud. I'm the only one that's loud over here. You're huh? making a scene. You're making a scene. Uh, making a scene. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. It doesn't draw much attention. <laughs> So we're here with Travis Mastrana's uh, Subaru GL wagon, yep. and this is Mark, who's running the team this weekend. It's engine, it's 2.3, uh, it's all cast block, cast heads, uh, all done in house at Vermont Sports Car. The four flaps on the body, uh, hydraulic, and uh, one on the roof is air. And we've got the air tank and the hydraulic pump inside, and the coolers and everything to keep the temperatures down. So it's essentially a wild car on top of what you guys know already. Pretty yeah. much tried and tested yeah. rallycross yeah. set up underneath yeah. Yeah. with a kind of a funky yeah. wide body yeah. Subaru wagon on top. Something like that, full carbon. Uh, the whole sides come off. All you're left is a roll cage if you wanted to. So we've been looking at all these cool race cars. Even Ian Beattie is here driving from Mandela Park in one of Martin Brown's old cars. And um, there's so many people here. But I love race cars, but really, it's drift games. We love drift cars. So, boys, are ready to take to the hill. Let's get to it. I take the whole city down with this. I take the whole city down with this.
So you know the really nice Liberty Walk car? Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely spotless. Yeah. Did you see what happened to it? I did. I saw it. It's absolutely milled it into the bales. We saw it on the internet. Yeah. And everybody just blew their mind because oh. of the, the body kit. Because oh. it's like nothing else on an S15 before. Yeah. It's like an 80s. GT yeah, car, yeah, yes. and like how wide is this from the standard car? Uh, rear is uh, 80 centimeter, yeah, each each one. And this is similar on the front, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is obviously an S15 drift car, this is a drift yeah, car, drift. but w this has a very special uh, engine in this car, yeah, right? Four rotary twin turbo, yeah. Four rotary twin turbo, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. That is nuts. Wow. What's the horsepower of it? Uh, right now is a uh, 1,000 horsepower. 1,000 horsepower from a roadie. Gotta love Goodwood, gotta love Liberty Walk, gotta love four rotors. We got a world exclusive for you. The first time this car has ever been on video. Now that's a big statement, but it's a very special car. It's a car that also makes my car look really boring. It's this. Now I have some nice wheels on my car, I've got Strom DS25s, love those wheels, but it turns up with the Blitz 03s. I mean, first of all, that's the most baller wheel combo I've ever seen. Where'd you get these? Uh, a friend had them on her car and I always thought they were cool. She put it on Marketplace and it was at the right time where we were struggling to find a wheel that I like. We've gone this way, that would look sick and we're going for the Japanese American theme. Let's put them on, you know, it looks cool in any car, but yeah, on this. Because you've got the Japanese engine, Japanese wheels. Corvette owners all over the world going, what in the name of God has he done? I've seen Mad Mike thrash the shit out of his every time here. And I was like, I don't think they're as unreliable as people say. And I called up PPRE, uh, who build their engines. <laughs> Gareth, who runs that business, the most relaxed guy in the world. Talked me through it and yeah, put, I said, this is what we want. And he put a package together and it turned up in a little box, you know, two and a half months later. <laughs> So while I was at Goodwood, I got a very interesting message from Ryan Mayer at Riverside Drift in the USA, asking me, did I want to come and compete at the Link ECU 50K in Indiana? Now, earlier in the year, I had announced an event in America, which was a big, you know, bucket list thing for me, but to actually go and compete in a drift event in America was something that I never thought would ever be possible. So we said, yeah, let's go. And I have to say, that was one of my favorite trips of the whole year. The whole crew were so cool. Everybody was so nice. But us being us, there was so much drama. That There's it actually- ups and downs. There was some ups and downs. It made for a very interesting weekend. So we just arrived. So the boys are here from Riverside Drift. And I'm just gonna take this, Josh, if you wanna take a lift in this. Tube framed Sylvia. Pretty breezy. brought the car that I'm driving this weekend here it's the first time I'm gonna to get to see it which I'm pretty excited about oh, it looks very nice. so you said yeah it was a joke that they were saying that this is our daily this is now my competition car and the car I'll be driving for the next few days on the road. Whoa, that sounds f***ed up. IP. 
people. I thought I'd seen everything done to an S14. I mean, we've seen low, we've seen V8, we've seen everything. But nothing quite like Tom Hardy's weekend car in Mad Max. <laughs> <laughs> this is Scott, who owns the car. This is Dan, you guys might remember him from when we met up in Hoonigan last year. Yeah. I spun the idea by Dan. Dan was like, that sounds super fun. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and he's basically the one who showed up and made the car safe and running and driving. I made so. it way more out of control than I think it was supposed to be. We want to get the start up because this exhaust out in Europe, this would definitely not be allowed anywhere, <laughs> even in the field. It's so loud. It's, it's so loud. So this is pretty much just the manifold coming straight up to the sky. It's a very dirt car mod yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be pretty wild. Cheers for that. That was fucking insane. <laughs> oh. It's definitely taking a bit of the greenery down now. So, we have a Jimmy Oaks here who is able to play Excel sheets <laughs> and know exactly what they're it's doing. It's not 1999, baby. <laughs> So he's gonna plug into the link, see if uh, he can figure out what's going on. So what's happening is it's like it's revving up, and then when you go on power, it just dies back down to like three, 4,000 RPM. When you clutch kick it, you can even hear when you're in the clutch that it doesn't rev up, and when you come off, it's just exactly the same. So momentum and handbrake will get you around, but you're not playing with it at any point, so we'll, we'll figure it out. Basically, we hope the car is working. We've raised the rev limiter like 1,000 RPM. We've got a little bit more response to the e-thrall. We're now putting nitrous in it. I think the car will run about 350 horsepower, which is probably a third of what everybody else is running. A third? There's people here running over a thousand. Yeah, but we're here to not make up the numbers. We're going to try fun. We're going to try and put a good qualifying run on. And if I get into the show, that's a win for me. If nothing else, we've got the coolest car mats of anybody on the grid this I'll weekend. I'll say you're the only person with car mats on the grid. Yeah. I'm not sure if car mats are, are, are a good advantage or disadvantage, but I'm going to look down and go, USA, Ireland flag, that's what I want. Maybe the reason it's got no power is because the catalytic converters are clogged. So they're going to cut them in half, take the cores out. So if we get all that together, we'll go back out and try again. So hopefully that fixes everything. The converters are now definitely got it out of the car. It's all white platinum on the ground. I don't think they're supposed to be white, so I don't, that could have been the issue. I don't know. I've never cut the cat out of a drift car before. I've never had one. More of a dog person myself. Wow. All right, so we qualified. We actually qualified, which I really didn't think was possible after all the practice and everything, but we got in the show. That's the good news. The bad news is we're up against Taylor Ray. They feel faster anyway, because yeah. they're so low and small. Yeah. And then you put all the torque in it. It must be fun to drive. It is really fun. It is like, it is a workout, because I don't have power steering. We're looking forward to the battle. Yeah, Can't same. wait to get out there. It it's going to be, be fun. fun. It's going to be, it looks like it's staying dry, which Hopefully. is good. That anyway, we're going to see you out there. Yes. Good luck. the car.
gave it a go. Gave it a go. It's as much as she had, I think. I think you gave it 150% there. That was on the edge everywhere. I was like just firing. And, uh, I think the chase was okay. The lead, I went a bit too early and it just didn't wash the way I thought it would wash. So I ended up on the inside of the corner. And after that, I think I got all the clips everywhere. That was pretty good. So it was good though. I mean, I lost Taylor Ray. He's an amazing driver. And he's got a much faster car than me. This little thing from breaking down, falling apart, and then eventually getting going. We gave a good chase run. I mean, we did two runs where I didn't embarrass myself. We did good fun. It's tough to drive, but I feel like I've learned so much from driving this car that I'm going to bring back to my car, which is lighter, more power. But I still think learning in cars like this is so valuable because you don't have all the get out of jail free cars. Like you mess up once, you're done. So like that's why I spun in qualifying. But but at the same time, I enjoyed it because I actually didn't just watch him go off into the distance. I gave it a go. Threw everything I had at him, so I'm pumped. So after an amazing weekend in Indiana, a lot of stuff was happening behind the scenes that we didn't show on the cameras. We sat down with Adam LZ at that event to try and make the LZ Festival in Ireland a reality. And we decided that weekend that we could. We spoke to Jimmy Oaks, we spoke to some other guys that were coming over and everybody was starting to get hyped behind the scenes. But it was eight weeks out from the proposed date, which meant we had to get 12 cars ready. We had to prepare the entirety of Mondello. This was gonna be a bigger task than we ever had before. And we had the least amount of time to get it ready. But after meeting all the guys, seeing the culture there, the idea for me was to showcase Irish car culture on the grandest stage of them all. Bring all the cameras there, bring the best of Ireland, to compete with the best of America and Europe all in the one venue. It was gonna be the wildest event we had ever done. And we still had half a season of Driftmasters, some crazy events and projects we hadn't even thought of at that stage that would join the channel. Only halfway through the year now. I'm only halfway through the year at this point in the video. So what we decided to do in this video was show you the first half of the year, but the second half of the year was definitely the most exciting. So in part two, you get to see all the behind the scenes of the LZ Festival and when Drift Games actually became a global brand.